Hey there, today we're going to be using complex numbers for geometry and we'll find an amazingly unique proof to Huron's formula. By the end of this video, you're going to understand not only the beauty of complex numbers, but also how to use them for difficult geometry problems. If you're more interested in, in the Huron's formula part than the complex numbers part, I'd recommend checking out my previous video for a slightly easier proof. Let's start by thinking about how complex numbers can be used with geometry. We will begin with a quick review of complex numbers. I think of complex numbers just as two-dimensional numbers. The x-axis is the real axis and the y-axis is the imaginary axis. For example, our point A here has an x of four and a y of three, so it's four plus three i. Now there's, another, now there's another way of representing complex numbers called polar form. There are two important things here. The magnitude, which is the distance from the origin, also called the absolute value. And there's the argument, which is the angle from the positive real axis. Now let's think about multiplication by i. When you multiply a complex number by i, in this case, three plus i, where do you think this will go? Thinking about it geometrically, it turns out multiplying by i is like rotating the number 90 degrees counterclockwise. Let's think about why this is. There are two triangles that are congruent, this one and this one, because they both have side lengths of length one, of length three and one, three and one. This means that if we have this angle as theta, then since this angle is 90, this angle is 90 minus theta. Then on the other triangle, the angles are the same. So this is 90 minus theta as well. And this means that the angle here, or the rotation, is going to be 90 degrees. Now let's think about what happens when you multiply two complex numbers. It turns out all you have to do is add the argument or angle and multiply the magnitude or distance to the origin. This is actually an amazing fact about complex numbers that could honestly be its own video, but for today, we're just gonna take it for granted. If this is your first time with this, I encourage you to look into it more. Okay, that's about all the background on complex numbers we need for now. Now let's get into the geometry part of this. For this proof, we're going to be using the in-circle, which is the circle that fits just inside the triangle. Let's define our diagram. The triangle's points are A, B, and C. The points of tangency are D, E, and F. The in-center is I. The side lengths are A, B, and C. And the in-radius is R. First off, triangle AFI is congruent to AEI. This is because these are both right angles because the tangent is always perpendicular to the radius. We can then use HL congruent, congruence or hypotenuse leg congruence because the hypotenuse of both triangles is AI and the legs of both triangles are R. From this congruence, we get that angle FAI is equal to angle EAI, and we get that length AF equals AE. Doing this on the other two sides, we have that the blue sides are equal, the red sides are equal, and the green sides are equal. We also have that the angles are equal. We can name the angles alpha and alpha, beta and beta, and gamma and gamma. Now let's try to find the red, green, and blue lengths. We know that red plus green is equal to A, green plus blue is equal to B, and blue plus red is equal to C. We can solve this as a system of equations to get that if S is the semi-perimeter or half the perimeter, blue is equal to S minus A, red is equal to S minus B, and green is equal to S minus C. Just keep this in your memory because we'll use it later. Now let's relate this stuff to the area. 
The blue area here has a base of A and a height of R, so its area is AR over 2. The red is BR over 2, and the green is CR over 2. So in total, the area is A plus B plus CR over 2, which is just RS. Now we have enough information and tools to prove Huron's formula. So we can start by realizing that the tan of beta is R divided by S minus B, which we can see from this triangle. We can represent this using complex numbers. The complex number with an X of S minus B and a Y of R is going to have argument beta. This means that S minus B plus RI has argument beta. By the same reasoning, S minus A plus RI has argument alpha, and S minus C plus RI has argument gamma. We also know that two alpha, two beta, and two gamma are the angles of the big triangle. Remembering that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, we have two alpha plus two beta plus two gamma is equal to 180. Dividing by two, we get alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 90. Let's think about where else alpha plus beta plus gamma is. Remember that when you multiply complex numbers, you add their arguments? Well, this mean, well that means that S minus A times RI, S minus A plus RI times S minus B plus RI times S minus C plus RI has an argument of alpha plus beta plus gamma, which is just 90. Now, what exactly does it mean to have an argument 90 degrees? It means that it is on the positive imaginary axis here. And what we can use from this is that the real part has to be zero. Okay, well now let's think about the various coefficients of i here. When i is raised to the zeroth or second power, it's real. When it's raised to the first or third power, it's imaginary. We want the real part to be zero. So let's find the real part. When we multiply this out, i to the zeroth power is going to have coefficient s minus a times s minus b times s minus c, because you have to multiply the real parts here. Now our i squared is going to have a coefficient of r squared times s minus a plus s minus b plus s minus c. This is because you need two ri's and one real part. So you could have ri, ri, and s minus c, or you could have ri, ri, and s minus b, or you could have ri, ri, and s minus a. We know that s minus a plus s minus b plus s minus c is just 3s minus a minus b minus c. And since a plus b plus c is the perimeter, or 2s, this is really just 3s minus 2s, which is just s. Well, now we know the real part is 0, so we can set this equal to 0. And then since i squared is negative 1, we have s minus a times s minus b times s minus c minus r squared s is equal to 0. Solving for r, we get r is equal to the square root of s minus a times s minus b times s minus c over s. Remember that area formula we proved earlier, that r times s is the area? Well, we can now use that to get that the area is equal to the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. And there we go. We've got Huron's formula. This proof is admittedly more complicated than the others. However, the technique of using complex numbers in geometry is powerful and beautiful and can provide proofs to many other difficult geometry problems. If you appreciated this nice example of complex numbers in geometry, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.